Mistral AI has released a new large language model. This one is focused purely on programming and software engineering tasks. It's a 24 billion parameter model, but when you use quantization, you can fit it in about 14 to 16 gigs of RAM, which means you can run it locally if you have a fairly good uh, NVIDIA RTX graphics card, one with 16 gigs of RAM or more, and it will run at a decent speed. In this video, I want to show you uh, DevStral running, show you what it can do, show you some of its weaknesses, and then at the end, bring you to a little conclusion. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's jump into this. So Devstral is an agentic LLM, large language model, for software engineering tasks. It was built under a collaboration between Mistral AI and All Hands AI. And we'll talk more about uh, those in a minute. Now, what is it? It's a fine-tuned version of Mistral Small 3.1 which means it's a long context window of 128,000 tokens. Now, because it's a coding agent, uh, DevStral is text only, and before the fine tuning from Mistral 3.1, the vision encoder was removed, meaning that the, the parameters are used just for the coding tasks. Now, here's the important thing. It's light enough to run on a single RTX 4090 or on a Mac with 32 gigabytes of RAM, making an ideal choice for local deployment and on-device use. In fact, I'm testing it just on a single RTX 4060 Ti with 16 gigs of video RAM, and I'm getting about 17 tokens a second. Now, the collaboration I talked about is because coding platforms such as Open Hands can allow the model to interact with local code bases and provide fast resolution to issues. So if you're using it in conjunction with a framework like Open Hands, it can work on the code on your machine and you just interact with it. Today I'm just going to use it as a large language model, ask it questions via a prompt and then use its replies. Okay, because this uh, is a large language model specifically for software engineering, I want to test it with a whole variety of different languages, not just, let's say, Python. So we'll start with Rust. Write a Rust program to perform the following. Ask the user for their name. Find the SHA-256 value of their name. Find the MD5 hash value of the SHA-256 value that was found in step two. Then search the result of the MD5 hash to see if the letter A appears in it, and then print out true or false if it was found or not. So... The point is here is it's asking it to follow a sequence of events. I want you to do this and then do this and then do this and see if it can do it. Okay, so here I'm over on the machine uh, running this under Olama. And as you can see, this has got a GeForce RTX 4060 Ti with 16 gigs of RAM. So we run Olama. This has previously downloaded the model, which Olama does automatically. And then we're going to ask it our Rust question. Okay, so there's a question. So let's go away and ask it to do it. And it's going to come up now with the Rust. And so you can see the Rust code here. And then uh, it will also give us a cargo file to allow us to uh, build the right dependencies. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste that into some files. And let's give it a run. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cut and paste all that into uh, the right files. There's all the stuff we were looking for. So let's just go with cargo run. Okay, it's going to build all that stuff as it needs to. And then let's see what happens. Enter my name, Gary. Okay, there it's giving me the 256 uh, hash. There's the MD5. It has got, for example, the letter A in it. The letter A has been found. So there you go. It wrote the program and it worked perfectly. Okay, next let's look at bug fixing. This is one of the great powerful things about a large language model. So here's a piece of C code and it's got an overflow in it. What does an overflow mean? When you do some mathematical operation, for example, add two things together and the result is bigger than the space that's been allocated for that number. So if you have an integer, an int, then it might be, let's say, 32 bits long, and you add up two numbers and you get something that's bigger than 32 bits. And there is a, an overflow error here in this code. It's actually just here because you're trying to add up these two numbers. They can overflow there because they're both 32 bit, well, they're both integers. Uh, and uh, then you divide it by two and then you cast it to a float so it gets it wrong. So we're going to ask uh, DevStral to actually fix that for us. Okay, so let's ask it. And it says, yes, it's in. The problem is when you're calculating the average, okay, when you're adding num1 and num2. So it's told us that perfectly okay. It's now giving us an alternative to do that. And the way it solved the problem is that it's casting each number here 
to a float before it's adding them because floats are actually uh, bigger. And so therefore you cast them to a float and then you get the response is a float and then you divide it by two. So that will get away from the overflow for those integers. So that's the correct answer. There are other ways to fix it, but that's just as good a way uh, to fix it. So that's great. Okay, so let's try it with some Python. This is one I've asked many, many different LLMs over the last, uh, you know, couple of years, I suppose now. Write a Python program, it takes the phrase Gary explains, counts the total number of alphanumeric characters, which means it'll ignore the space and the exclamation mark, multiplies that count by seven, converts it to a hexadecimal, reverses the hexadecimal and prints it out. Basically, again, showing that it can follow a set of steps that are not some set of steps that you'll find elsewhere online because this is not the kind of thing you would just do randomly. Uh, so it's not something that's probably found. So we're asking it to do it by following the steps. And uh, let's give it a go. Okay, so it's giving us some Python and then we'll just cut and paste this now and run it. Okay, so here's the code that it gave us. Let's hit run and we should be getting four or five. That's absolutely correct. So great, that works as well. Okay, write a JavaScript program for bouncing a yellow ball within a hexagon. Make sure to handle collision detection properly. Make the hexagon slowly rotate. The ball must stay within the shape. Implemented in JavaScript, use the, J, uh, the 3JS library uh, if you want. So let's see how it does at that. Okay, it's chosen to use 3.js and it's going to create a HTML document and then it's going to embed some JavaScript inside of that. Uh, having loaded where we can see the uh, 3.js uh, library. Okay, so let's take that code now and we'll cut and paste it into a HTML file and see what happens. Okay, I've cut and paste that and as you can see, it's just a black screen. And when we look down here, it's saying cannot access velocity uh, before in initialization. And, and so, and that's just ranking up loads and loads of errors here. Let's give it one go. Let's, um, let's uh, cut and paste that uh, error and see whether it can fix it. So I'm just gonna cut and paste the error in here. Okay, it says, I'm sorry for the error to fix this. We need to do da 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 da. So it's giving us some more JavaScript. So we'll give it a second chance. Okay, so here's the code. And as you can see, it's got a kind of a ball, some balls, they're not doing any bounce. And there is a shape rotating here uh, in the middle. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's had a, another good stab at it, but this is basically not the way to do it. And just for comparison, I asked an online large language model, one of the bigger ones to do this. In fact, I said, can I have 21 balls of different colors inside of the hexagon? And you can see it can be done. Okay, one final test, write a Windows application using only Win32 API calls. That counts the number of words in some text. There should be an area to paste in the text and a status bar that shows the number of words implemented in C++, but only using Win32 API. So basically the lowest kind of level you can get nowadays without all the other uh, you know, frameworks that are built on top. Uh, let's ask it. Okay, so it's having a go. It says it needs to uh, do different things. It knows what it needs to do. And uh, it's going to give me some C code here, C++ code, and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, I've cut and paste that in. Unfortunately, it doesn't compile. Now, in my testing, I did go through this several times and ask it to have another go and try to repair it. And after about four or five iterations, it still hasn't fixed it. So I'm not going to do that now because I don't think it will work. However, just to show you that it does work, I asked a, a larger online large language model to make one of these and uh, it does actually work. In fact, if we cut and paste the prompt into there that we used, there you go, 56 words uh, counted and it goes like that. So it is possible, but uh, DevStyle didn't quite make it. Okay, so you have it, DevStyle running locally on a uh, computer. You can do the same thing at home. Love to hear your thoughts about this. Now, if you do want me to make a video about how you use it together with a framework like Open Hands, do drop me a comment and I'll see whether there's enough interest for that video. Okay, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kinds of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel and please do check out my Patreon page. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.